Please follow the order of service for our service today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge. Our first hymn is hymn 537, Beautiful Savior, Beautiful Savior. baptism, Norma was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. 
For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Reading of the 23rd Psalm, and please join me if you, the Spirit moves you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Norma and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing, Be Still My Soul, hymn 752. <laughs>
first reading today comes from the words of the prophet Isaiah, words of hope and comfort. Isaiah 25, beginning in verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast on all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Please join me in responsively reading the gradual found in your bulletin. Your word is a lamp to my feet. How sweet are your words to my taste. My heart overflows with a pleasing theme. Our epistle reading is from the first letter of Peter chapter 1 beginning at verse 3, reminding us of the importance of our baptism and how God sustains us in this faith and in this life all the way to the bitter end, and as Aunt Norma taught us, 102 is still achievable. And my cousin, I'll tell you, at my mother's funeral said, Scott, I nominate you to live to be 100, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is um, imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perish, perish, is perishes, excuse me, it is perishes, through, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with the joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is firstborn of the dead. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And I, uh, I picked this in honor of Aunt Norma's specific love of children. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with hymn 457, Jesus Christ is risen today. and all of God's peace be yours now and always, especially as we say goodbye to this beloved lady who cared so very much for all of us. Just want to uh, kind of reinforce from the gospel lesson, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Thus far the text. Norma Meta stole. 
I had heard that name Meta since I was in Minnesota. That was the name of my church secretary. So it perked my ears right as soon as, was that you that told me, Elaine, that her middle name or Al, one of you told me her middle name. Or as virtually everybody here knew her, Aunt Norma. I think she was Aunt Norma to everybody. She was my idea of what a classy southern lady was like, especially having come from New Orleans. Did I say it correctly? I think that's how she would say it, New Orleans. Not New Orleans, New Orleans. We would chat about having beignets and uh, chicory coffee. And I love those visits down in New Orleans. And I'll tell you what, next time I'm down there, I'll be thinking of that lady. And thinking of what beautiful clothes she always came to church in. And those beautiful sweaters. Wow. Snazzy dresser. Again, what I would consider a true southern lady. A true southern lady who spoke her mind. Am I right? Much to the chagrin of both Elaine and Gail, many times I'd see your faces just get bright red at things that she would say, especially stuff like, uh, I just don't understand why y'all can't have Sunday school all year long. And there was no explaining to her that, uh, hey, everybody leaves here during the summer. There wouldn't be any kids or teachers. Well... We did down in Nolans. Okay, Aunt Norma. Or, of course, as she would come and sample our local cuisine, I just don't understand why you got to put cheese on everything. Although I found out today that uh, she actually did like Swiss cheese, so that was okay. But it was the American stuff that she didn't like, and kind of can't blame her for that. But Norma was a lot more than just the lady that we all called Aunt Norma. She was a person, a woman of faith in both thought, word, and deed. And I'm going to tell all of you today that she made my job incredibly easy. I kid you not. Because except for my opening remarks, pretty much everything is going to be things that she said. She left them written in a book and... I would venture to say that virtually all of you should take the time probably to read the entire book. I just got certain excerpts throughout it. And she had some wonderful things to say about her mom, her dad, about church and service in the church. She had a lot of things to say about faith. And finally, she had some really beautiful closing thoughts about you, whom she considered her family. So we start with mothers, and that's especially poignant since May 9th, that's uh, a week from tomorrow, is Mother's Day. And although she never had any children of her own, she certainly had some wonderful things to say about her own mother. For example, what is a key lesson you learned from your mother? And she said, never tell a lie and say your prayers. Got it? Never tell a lie and say your prayers. That's pretty simple. But wonderful little examples from her own mother. And what stories did your mother always tell you about? My mother said that even as a young child, I was very independent. And that's even in her obituary. And I could see that. If someone wanted to help me and I didn't want help, I would say, I do it myself. Hey, God bless her. God bless her. Again, what will you most remember about your your mother? This is what she remembers about her mother. I remember her complete devotion to her family, her husband and children. When we were not in school, she seldom left us out of her sight. Also, her devotion to the Lord and to the church. She prayed regularly and taught us to pray. 
If there was a storm, she gathered us together in bed in the front bedroom and prayed. And I'm guessing down in New Orleans, that happened a lot. Okay? She often sang hymns while working in the kitchen. Even better than whistling while you work, huh? The whole family went to church every time the doors were open. That's Aunt Norma's words. They went to church every time the doors were open. That's food for thought, isn't it? But not to exclude fathers, here's a little thing she left about her father. What story did your father tell about you? She scratched out always and about. What story did your father tell about you? One day, as usual, I was telling him, meaning her father, what to do and how to do it. And he said, Daughter, I don't know what to do with you, but I don't know what I would do without you. What a beautiful thought. I don't know what to do with you, but I don't know what I would do without you. She obviously loved her parents very much. What about being in church and Christian service, a life of service? How has being a part of this church affected your life and the life of your family? Listen up. It has helped me as a truly, excuse me, it has helped make us a truly Christian family. She means you guys. We went to church every Sunday, again, her family. My brothers studied for the ministry. My sister and I taught Sunday school. My mother made sure that we learned our catechism lesson every Saturday night in preparation for Sunday school. All of us, mother, father, and children, remained faithful all our lives. Something else here about Christian service. Why is volunteering important to you? And Norma wrote, it is important to do for others for their pleasure. It is the Lord's will that we do unto others. I enjoyed my Thursday afternoons at Lutheran Nursing Home. So she went and visited folks in the nursing home, and why? Why? Why do you feel so strongly about a particular cause, meaning, again, Christian service? I felt strongly about volunteering at the Lutheran home because there was a great need to involve residents in some activities instead of having them in bed or sitting idly with nothing to occupy their minds. I could see that. She was a lot like my grandmother, who would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and go out and start waking the residents up because it was daylight, and they needed to get their breakfast and get busy. I could just see her doing that. For years, I went to, and I'm going to, forgive me, it looks like Milna Boys, what's that? Milne Boys Home, every Wednesday afternoon after school. There were five of us from the Lutheran Women's Missionary League who taught Sunday school. There was a great need for them, these boys, to know God's word for the salvation of their souls. And now here's something very salient too. What could you say to encourage others to be involved in volunteerism? And we've got a lot of young people here in the church today. I say try it you'll like it. There is great satisfaction in helping others. Straight from the mouth of Norma. On matters of faith, it's been said that the best thing in life are free. Is that true? Aunt Norma wrote back, the Lord's promise of eternal salvation through faith in him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the triune God, is free. 
It is the most wonderful gift possible. And folks, she's right. When asked what are your core beliefs, how important is, what is important to you, how do you want people to remember you, listen to this. I believe that because God first loved us, we should in turn love our neighbors. My family and my friends are both very important to me. I don't know what I would do without my Oh, sorry, nieces. She split it in half. What I would do without my nieces and their husbands at this point in my life, I refer to Elaine and Al Mackey and Gail and Peter Solari. Mentioning you guys personally. I would like people to remember me as a practicing Christian. Not a Christian in name only, a practicing Christian. On matters of faith, do you have a motto that you live by? This could be something you think of that gets you through the good times and the bad times. I have two. One, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And true, second, the motto of the LWML, or Lutheran Women's Missionary League, serve the Lord with gladness. Be thankful to him. Good stuff, Norma, good stuff. Wish you were still around to write more of my sermons. Do you believe in God? Describe your faith and its effect on your life. Include a prayer or other thoughts if you wish. And she puts down, see page 104. I don't think I have page 104. That's all right. From early childhood, I was taught to love and trust the Lord. I was taught to say my prayers every night before going to sleep. I learned the scriptures at home in Sunday school, catechism, Bible class, and Sunday worship services. The effect of faith is peace, joy, and contentment in life. And examples of excellent prayers are the Lord's Prayer, Luther's morning and evening prayers. When asked when you die, what will happen? This is what Norma believed. When I die, I will go to heaven and be with my, my Lord and serve him through eternity. When times are difficult, what do you do to get through those times? Aunt Norma answered, I trust in the Lord to care for me. He promises he will not have me Leave me, nor forsake me. The Bible says, lo, I am with you always. Matthew 28. I pray to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And now, family. Elaine thought that this would be a great uh, thing for all of you, especially you children and you, I should say, you nieces and nephews and great nieces and great nephews. Do we have any great greats at this point? I don't think so. On the horizon, maybe. This is her speaking directly to you. I hope they will realize that our family was truly Christian and that we followed the teachings of the Bible as taught by the Missouri Synod Lutheran Church also, that our family members truly love each other and were devoted to each other. I would like to tell members of my family who live in future generations to do the following. Serve the Lord in gladness. Attend church regularly. Participate in church activities. Serve on committees and hold church offices when asked to do so. We volunteer work, particularly for charitable causes. Get a good education. Go to college, if at all possible. Choose a curriculum that will be helpful in choosing a vocation. That lady was ahead of her time with that. 
don't overspend. That sounds like Norma. Don't overspend. Have a savings account. And I'm guessing she would want you to have more than two bucks in it. Right? Although that's a start. Let's see here. Get back here. Plan for the future and for your retirement. Kids, keep a healthy diet. Travel if possible. See the world. Wow. The Lord bless you and keep you. May we all be united one day in heaven, serving the Lord in gladness. If you feel like you've heard a voice from the beyond, you have, because she left that for you. You know, that's a great idea. I think we should all probably do something like it. I don't know what that book was that she filled out, but it certainly has a wonderful opportunity for us to leave something as a testimony to each of those who loved us and cared for us. And for us to be able to follow in those fam same footsteps, I don't know if I'm going to make it to 100, Aunt Norma, so I may see you sooner than that. But I'm so honored and privileged to have had you as a member in this congregation and to know that you were faithful to believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and not being ashamed to share that with anybody. Because she not only said it, she lived it, as we all should. She was a great lady. Give my regards to New Orleans when you get down there. Have a beignet on me. Amen. May now the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in the joy of Christ's own salvation. Amen. We're going to be continuing with the prayer of the church, so please turn to that in your service bulletin. Pray to the Lord our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Aunt Norma and to all who mourn, comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, receive our thanks for Aunt Norma and for all the blessings you bestowed upon her in this earthly life. Bring us at last... <clears throat> 
to our heavenly home, that with her we may see, your fa see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, who you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We continue with forever with the Lord.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen. For all those gathered, uh, I know we didn't quite put it into the uh, obituary, but uh, Aunt Norma is going to depart us and be rest forever in peace down in New Orleans. And uh, we wish her well on her trip. And all of the rest of you family who gather uh, that day when you're going to be able to uh, uh, lay her to rest. And uh, uh, travel safely. Thank you for coming on behalf of the family. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Amen. And thank you all for coming.